Oh, hey there, everybody. I thought we could do something a little different today. I thought we could go for a walk through the National Forest here together. You know, June marks my nomad bursary, which means I'm two years into this three-year travel lifestyle experiment. As with all anniversaries, it's a good time to pause and reflect and ask myself tough questions. I'm hoping my reflections are helpful to someone out there, so let's go for a walk and talk. With two thirds of my planned travel completed, my main question to myself is, have I been a good steward of my time as it relates to my original intentions. You may firstly be wondering why I chose a three year trial period of this nomadic lifestyle. When I sold my businesses to flee Chicago, the buyer needed a partial loan, which I agreed to and divided the principal for, you guessed it, three years. With the security of that monthly stipend, I felt comfortable embarking on the adventure of exploring America with my faithful furry companion, Miss Riot. While I knew the monthly loan amortization would not cover all the expenses, I budgeted three years of savings to cover the rest with the intention to treat the road like a moving ashram experience, stewarding my time towards meditation, healing, study, appreciation, and surrender to God. I also wanted to find a new state I could one day settle in, write a novel, and work random jobs to explore abilities and interests. These were the goals of the three-year nomadic experience and what I budgeted to do. Unfortunately, a travel lifestyle is more expensive than many would have you believe, even camping for free on public lands. At least it has been for me. Three major repairs, a DPF filter on the exhaust in Minneapolis, a low pressure fuel pump in New Mexico, and a new axle for the trailer in California has cost a bit over $6,500 in emergency repairs in two years. Add on to that the maintenance cost for 40,000 miles of driving, food, replacing gear that is built for short-term camping trips, not day-to-day -day living, and the rising cost of fuel. And I haven't met a month under $1,200. Now all of this did fit into what I budgeted and put aside for emergencies. But it still has been a significant paradigm shift to have such a lifestyle flip and work such a different budgeting style. At least it supported my goal of surrendering. <laughs> the first 10 months on the road, I took to explore America and inside myself. At this point, I'm not sure what I like more, adventuring the objective or the subjective world. Both have a lot of value. But after almost a year of living on the loan stipend and savings, I started having that itch of wanting more income. So it was time to start the adventure and trying on different jobs. As some of you may recall from my videos, in May 2020, I landed a six month camp posting gig and a couple side hustles writing and editing. In July of 2020, not quite a year ago, 
this hobby YouTube channel was monetized, which yields a few fills of the tank each month. But if you're wondering, while I love making videos as a hobby, I don't intend to ever pursue the influencer status. YouTube is simply an extension of my love of storytelling and sharing life. So I kept looking for work. <laughs> and in December 2020, I got a couple more short term writing and editing gigs, which allowed me to have a little more scrap. My hope is that I'll be able to mold all the experience and skills I've been learning into something lucrative in the future. Some of the unpleasant gigs have doubled as outstanding tests of my inner journey progress. What a bonus. <laughs> so I've checked a lot of boxes for how I want to use these three years, but I'm failing myself on a big goal, writing that novel. In my younger years, writing was my career goal. I earned three scholarships for writing and journalism to the University of Wisconsin and started my higher education down that road. I had several short stories and poems published in my early 20s, and I easily and often visualized myself to be the female Charles Bukowski. A series of life choices led to a change of majors and career trajectory that I have never forgiven myself for. It meant so much to me to be a writer, and I gave it up to be under the control of a narcissistic boyfriend. But that's another story. Now, the novel isn't a total fail. I have a year left of this three-year plan to finish it. But I haven't been following through on it either. I wrote two-thirds of it and then set it down about eight months ago to focus on a couple jobs I picked up. And I haven't written a word for it since. But recently, I was presented with the gift of having time and cause to reflect. God gives opportunities in surprising ways like being stuck for three weeks in the desert with a broken axle and a lot of time. In the silence of the desert waiting for repair, I was able to have the blessing of deeper realization, something I knew, but not well enough. I have no control outside of controlling myself and life's too short to be miserable. Part of controlling myself and mitigating misery is controlling how I spend my time each day and with whom and in what I put my energy. God was blessing me with a big mirror to look into to decide if I liked the image. I wasn't sure at first, but a couple more weeks of breadcrumbs led me to where I needed to be. God's cool like that. You know, the early death of my husband and several friends, compounded with a couple family members who didn't make it out of their 40s, gives me a profound respect for time and the ephemeralness of it. To be a good steward of time, to me, means I spend the finite hours allocated to me doing things that are gonna lead me to be a better version of myself. It means taking responsibility for how minutes are allocated, to follow through on commitments I make to others and to myself. It means keeping my thoughts and subsequent actions in good order. To make my bed, as Jordan Peterson may say. To steward time wisely, I think it's important to live and act in ways that are enriching to the soul. As I roadmap how I want to use the time in this final year of my travel lifestyle experiment, 
I'm assessing how I want to make it matter to my future self. The most meaningful thing I can do is finish the novel I promised myself to write. Whether it goes anywhere doesn't even matter at this point. So considering I only planned for this lifestyle for three years, you may be wondering if I can see myself continuing to pursue it beyond this next year. Most likely. I really enjoy the exploration, inwards and outdoors, a travel lifestyle affords. I love the adventures that lend way to stories I can share here on YouTube, on my blog, and maybe for potential future books if I can keep myself disciplined. I love how frugal the lifestyle can be. I love living in nature and the silence remote living provides. I love the changing scenery and being able to travel with the good weather. but I'm also realistic that I may need to replant roots at some point. In having visited 42 states in the last five years, I was led to buy a small acreage in a state I'm happy to pay taxes to. If at some point God calls me to be there, I'll of course answer. For now he seems to be allowing me to remain a wanderer, so I will. I have learned for sure over the past two years that I am no longer a city gal and probably never really was. I don't miss Chicago. I don't even like driving through cities anymore. I don't think I'll ever give up on simple, cheerful, intentional living, whether stationary or mobile. I have no desire to re-enter the competition, hurriedness, or congestion of city living. Most important to me out of this experiment is that the travel lifestyle has allowed me to surrender further and deeper my will and my life to God. And so I know it's really not up to me where I end up parking. As they say, the fruit will tell me if I spent time watering the right tree. I hope to be a good steward of this last year of my plan 4-3 and emerge from it better equipped and envisioned for the adventure of many more lived. That's my hope anyway. Thanks for walking with us. We'll see you next time.